Thailand outlook. สวัสดีครับ Welcome to Thailand Outlook. I'm k a c h a n g with Dot Chip. Today we have some uh, interesting stories to share with you. First up, let's talk about Thailand's financial prowess. You'll be thrilled to hear that Fish has affirmed Thailand's sovereign credit rating at triple B plus with a stable outlook. Thailand's ambitions are really soaring high. We are diving headfirst into expanding our trade and also investment opportunities in our neighboring countries. Also, if you're looking for heartwarming stories, Thailand's making great strides in increasing employment opportunities for disabled persons. Join us in celebrating the determination and talents of these individuals as they shine brightly in the workforce. And last but not least, let's talk about our mouth-watering Thai rice. Oh, it's not just your regular rice. We're taking things to the next level. With Thailand's rice innovations, brace yourself for a delightful journey as we explore the various products crafted from this humble grain. Thailand outlook. And in our first story today, we've got some exciting news on Thailand's economic front. Fitch Ratings, a renowned credit rating provider. Has affirmed Thailand's long-term foreign currency issuer default rating at triple B plus with a stable outlook. Now, here's a scoop on the economic forecast. Fitch predicts real GDP growth to soar to、uh, 3.7 percent in 2023, and even higher at 3.8 percent in 2024. A significant jump from the 2.6 percent recorded in 2022. Now the tourism industry is gearing up for a broad-based revival, with international tourist arrivals expected to reach a staggering 29 million in 2023,、uh, bouncing back from 11.2 million in uh, uh, 2022. And not only that, but Thailand's external finances are looking robust too. Our resilient external position is proving to be a core strength, providing a solid buffer against global financial challenges. And geopolitical risks, Fitch projects the current account to swing back into a surplus of two percent of GDP、uh, this year, and expand further to three point nine percent in 2024, which is driven by improving tourism receipts and favorable terms of trade due to falling oil prices. And guess what? The Thailand Board of Investment or BOI is witnessing a remarkable surge in investment applications. In the first half of 2023, applications for investment promotion skyrocketed by a whopping 70%, totaling 364 billion baht, and I think that's around 10 billion US dollars. Now, foreign direct investment projects are on fire as well, with a jaw-dropping 141% increase, especially in industries like electronics, food processing, automotive, and the electric vehicles or EV supply chain as we know it. This is clear that global companies are seeing Thailand as the place to be for、uh, their manufacturing needs, and our country boasts strong fundamentals, well-developed infrastructures, and of course a solid supply chain, making it an attractive destination for foreign investors. Thailand outlook. And、uh, welcome back to the show. This is Thailand outlook. Let's talk investment opportunities that Thailand is exploring in our neighboring countries. The Thai government is on a mission to create more chances for our enterprising entrepreneurs to invest in neighboring countries. How? By expanding border checkpoints connections. Earlier this month, representatives from the Department of Trade Negotiations, Ministry of Commerce, led a team of Thai investors on a trip to Lao PDR. To explore potential trade opportunities, now Lao PDR has caught their eye as a market with tremendous potential, especially in the coffee industry. It's now the third largest coffee growing country in ASEAN, and with the tourism growth there,、um, coffee shops are thriving too. Thailand and Lao PDR are teaming up to create coffee supply chains,、uh, working on research and development to improve coffee production quality, and planning a coffee joint venture. 
and making use of tax privileges in the ASEAN framework for their coffee business. Our Thai team also、uh, took time to survey the Tanaling Dry Ports and Vientiane Southern Station,、uh, which is crucial freight transportation points for goods passing through Nong Khai Province in Thailand to、uh, Lao PDR and even further to China. Thanks to the Laos China Railway opening in 2021,、uh, Thai entrepreneurs have been able to export more fruit to China through this rail route. And the numbers. Uh, do not really lie. Thai exports to China are passing through Nong Khai border checkpoints, and also Laos have skyrocketed from 90 million baht in 2021 to、um, roughly、uh, 2.8 billion baht during the first five months of 2023, and that's a big difference. And our delicious fruits like durian, mango, pineapple, longans, and mangosteen、um, have also become a hit among Chinese consumers. Now, the Thai government's infrastructure development linking us with our neighboring countries is really yielding fruitful results, enabling our farmers and exporters to capitalize on the ASEAN-China free trade agreements and regional comprehensive economic partnership.、Uh, this is all about boosting Thai exports,、uh, particularly our fantastic fruit products. Thailand Outlook. You are listening to Thailand Outlook. I'm Kwa Chang with Jot Chit. We also have、uh, some inspiring news to share about the government's effort to increase employment opportunity for people with disabilities. Under the Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities Act, both private companies and public agencies are stepping up to employ individuals with disabilities. The act requires them to create suitable positions for disabled persons in a ratio of one to every 100 non-disabled employees, and if the number of non-disabled employees exceeds 100, one additional disabled person can be employed. Now let's look at some encouraging stats from 2022. Across the country, 14,444 workplaces embrace inclusivity. By employing 63,904 persons with disabilities, but the mission does not stop there. The government aims to increase this number to 68,000 disabled persons employed、um, this year or the year 2023.、Um, this is all about empowerment.、Uh, the contributions to the fund for the empowerment of persons with disabilities are being used to provide loans to disabled individuals for their occupations. In、this way, they can earn and support themselves and their families, fostering independence and also dignity. The Ministry of Labor is playing a pivotal role in creating more jobs opportunities for disabled persons, aiming to improve their living conditions and bridge social inequality. And according to the Ministry of Social Development and Human Security, approximately 2.1 million persons with disabilities have registered to receive welfare cards. Uh, with a balance representation of 52.2 percent males and 47.8 percent females,、uh, it's also worth、uh, mentioning that disabled persons age 60 and over comprise about 56 percent of the total number of persons with disabilities in Thailand. And when it comes to employment, approximately 36.8 percent of the working group of disabled persons are engaged in various occupations. While 6.17 percent who require additional supports could not be involved in employment. Also, in the realm of occupation, disabled persons showcase their diverse talents. Approximately 53 percent are engaged in agriculture, while 25.5 percent work、uh, for hire, and another 6 percent are self-employed, and the rest contribute as company employees and in state agencies. Thailand Outlook. And in our final story today, it is for rice lovers. Get ready to be blown away by Thailand's incredible rice innovations. Today on Thailand Outlook, we're diving into the exciting world of processed rice products that are taking the market by storm. And thanks to the rice department under the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives, Thai farmers are getting a helping hand to develop an array of processed rice products, all in response to the growing market demand, 
And guess what? This development is not only bringing stable income for our hardworking farmers, but also helping to stabilize the entire rice industry. Now, the versatility of Thai rice knows no bounds. It can be transformed into a wide range of food and non-food products, from mouth-watering noodles and crispy crackers to nutritious health drinks and even cooking oil. Um, speaking of exports, let's talk numbers. In 2022, Thailand exported um, roughly 7.7 million tons of rice, a significant 22% increase from the previous year, and the momentum has not slowed down. In the first four months of 2023 alone, Thai rice exports reached 2.6 million tons, marking an impressive 14.4% increase over the same period last year. Uh, our country has set uh, its sights on reaching a target of 8 million tons of rice exports this year. Uh, major importers of our high-quality rice include countries like Iraq, Indonesia, South Africa, and uh, the United States, as well as China. And to further boost our rice trade opportunities in the global market, Thai trade representatives have been actively engaging with counterparts from Hong Kong, China, uh, the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Japan, and uh, as I mentioned before, South Africa at international exhibitions. And the goal is to create more venues for Thai rice to reach consumers um, around the globe. Here is the cherry on top. The public and private sectors are teaming up for a project to develop new rice varieties, adding even more diversity to our already fantastic rice options. And within just three years of the projects, they have successfully developed 12 new rice varieties, surpassing the target set for a five-year period. And that wraps up today's edition of Thailand Outlook. Remember, Fitch has given Thailand sovereign credit rating a thumbs up at triple B plus with a stable outlook. Our economy is looking strong and steady. Thailand is also on the move, seeking to expand trade and investment opportunities in neighboring countries. The future is looking bright for some cross-border adventures. We are also celebrating progress in inclusivity with increasing employment opportunities for disabled persons. This is all about empowerment and building a more inclusive society. And finally, Thai rice is not just any rice. It has transformed into an array of mouth-watering products through Thailand's innovative techniques. From noodles to health drinks, there's a whole world of rice goodness to explore. Stay tuned for more exciting updates and heartwarming stories on the next episode of Thailand Outlook. Until then, keep smiling, keep dreaming, and keep believing in the potential of our amazing country. See you next time. I'm Kajang with Dot Tip. Swati Krap. Thailand Outlook. On the occasion of the 10th meeting of the ASEAN Ministers Responsible for Culture and Arts (AMCA) on October 27, 2022, held virtually in Vientiane, Lao (PDR), the 10 member states of ASEAN reaffirmed their commitment to safeguarding Southeast Asia's shared heritage, combating illicit trade in cultural property, and building a responsible art market all while pursuant to ASEAN's broader goal of maintaining and enhancing peace, security and stability in the region. Through recognition that the illicit trade in cultural property is damaging local communities, disrupting the historical record, defrauding consumers and has a propensity to fuel crime and other forms of violence that threatens not just Southeast Asia's rich cultural heritage, but also legal markets, cultural rights, regional security, local communities, and national economy. By appreciating artistic, historical, and religious significance of the cultural heritage that is now the target of looters and traffickers, its crucial role plays in encouraging economic growth, sustainable development, and socially responsible tourism as well as its ability to bring people together across borders, linguistic barriers, and religious differences. 
The Association of Southeast Asian Nations strive towards a future where Southeast Asia's rich past is preserved for the next generation, not stolen and sold to the highest bidder, and to cooperate together through the following measures in promoting a long-term regional comprehensive strategy that targets the underlying causes of the illicit trade in cultural property. In addition to continuing to reiterate and fortify existing ASEAN commitments to safeguard and promote ASEAN identity, conserve ASEAN cultural properties, preserving the larger international community as well as the interests of the individual member states and Southeast Asia as a whole. This statement encourages member states to consider expanding the possibility to ratify or implement the relevant regional and international agreements related to the protection of cultural property against looting, illicit import, export, and transfer of ownership, while exploring how to best fill the gaps in this legal and regulatory framework in accordance with their respective national laws and regulations. Concurrently, improving information sharing and cross-sectorial coordination between ASEAN members as well as between ASEAN and its dialogue partners, international organizations, and corporate players. With the support of communities, member states can enhance on-the-ground initiatives and other capacity-building workshops in order to steer financial grants and investments toward cash mobilization. The establishment of an ASEAN Working Group or cross-sectorial initiative to coordinate a regional response aims to create a long-term, multi-year action plan that attacks illicit trade from all perspectives, while exploring the viability of an ASEAN Regional Center, a center of excellence to assist international policymakers and the larger community to resolve existing issues and developing a system in accordance with domestic law and regulations to reinforce ethical business conduct in the art market, as well as fostering communication with other key industries such as financial, technology and transportation. The 10th meeting of the ASEAN Ministers Responsible for Culture and the Arts, AMCA, adopted on October 27, 2022, calls on all ASEAN partners, foreign governments, intergovernmental organizations, the private sector, and civil society to strengthen their own responses to the illicit trade of cultural properties, furthering a holistic approach centered on collaboration, due diligence, and transparency for ASEAN as a whole. Through the enhanced collaboration efforts, the Cultural Property Protection Conference is a necessity to redefine action plans, update stakeholders on progress, and enlist the help of new partners. With education being an impactful factor for all endeavors, the government has made sure to also support developments in the realm of schooling for the benefit of the southernmost provinces, seeing education as a way to both enhance the region's society and further the peace effort. Seeking to upgrade the quality of education in the southernmost provinces, the Southern Border Provinces Administrative Center, the SBPAC, has proposed the establishment of a Satun University in Satun Province. The proposal was put to the Strategic Committee for the Development of Southern Border Provinces. The Satun University project is to be carried out between 2023 and 2029, in line with the Southern Border Provinces Administration Act of 2010, which empowers SBPAC to promote and encourage education arrangements in the Southern Border Provinces. The SBPAC met with relevant agencies for discussions on the setting up of Satun University. These agencies included the Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Interior, the Office of the National Economic and Social Development Council, and the Bureau of the Budget. 
all of the entities agreed on the plan for the project as well as its necessity. The proposed university will be the first institution of higher education in Satun. Apart from upgrading educational standards for local youths, the campus has been envisioned to help strengthen the family institution, reduce social problems, and improve the quality of life of people in the Deep South. Further support from the Strategic Committee for the Development of Southern Border Provinces decided for Satun was a project to develop Ko Adang, or Adang Island, into a world-class tourism destination. Relevant agencies similarly agreed to designate Ko Adang a tourism center linking Trang, Krabi, and Phuket in Thailand with Langkawi in Malaysia. The linkage will enhance the island status as the Riviera of Southeast Asia and bring economic prosperity to the Deep South.
without you near me, the days would all be empty. The nights would seem so long. With you I see forever, oh so clearly. I might have been in love before, but it never felt this strong. Our dreams are young and we both know They'll take us where we want to go Hold me now, touch me now guiding star I'll be there for you if you should need me you don't have to change a thing I love you just the way you are so come with me and share the view I'll help you see forever too hold me now touch me now 